All right, how much can we account for hamstring to quad overlap in exercises like squats and deadlifts? Um, so you're actually not really using your hamstrings much at all during squats. So the hamstrings are a biarticular muscle. That means that they cross both the hip and the knee, except for the short head of the biceps femoris, which it's at the bottom and only crosses the knee. So it only performs uh, knee flexion, but the hamstrings act as hip flexors, sorry, hip extensors, as well as knee flexors. And when you're doing a squat, you're trying to do knee extension. So I will, I will, I will demonstrate what the hell I'm talking about for people who are not super familiar with anatomy. All right. So chair. So when I'm squatting, I'm both extending my hip and extending my knee, right? When you combine this with this, you get a squat, right? So if the hamstrings can both flex my knee and also extend my hip and the quads are extending my knee, they're not going to be active because the knee flexion, it doesn't get to choose. It does both. It extends the hip and it flexes the knee. So it's going to be inactive so that my quads, which are doing the majority of the work in a squat, can extend the knee. So when you look at studies on EMG, and more importantly, as we learned, when you look at studies on hypertrophy, you typically see no, no significant growth in the hamstrings in response to squats because the hamstrings are relatively quiescent. I mean, they're not active, right? They're just there as a stabilizer. So it is the glutes and the quads that do the vast majority of work on, on a squat, in addition to like your lumbar and all the other muscle groups that are they're involved because it's a full body movement. Deadlifts are a little different. There's very little knee extension in deadlifts unless you've got some pretty outlier um, anthropometrics or limb lengths. So I, I think a good way to think of squats is that they are a quad and glute builder and that deadlifts are a glute and ham builder because they're predominantly uh, hip extension while the other one's predominantly knee extension and hip extension. So what you're missing is actually direct hamstring work um, which is necessary only for, which I planted that seed earlier, the uh, short head of the bicep femoris, the lower kind of quote unquote hamstring. Uh, if your goal is, is hypertrophy, of course, you may not give a shit because it's not really active on either one. Uh, and when you're, when you're doing squats and deadlifts, like if you're a power lifter, leg curls probably don't need to do them. Um, and then uh, the rectus femoris, which is one of the heads of the quadricep, like the hamstrings is a biarticular muscle. So it is also one, it crosses the hip and the knee. So it's a hip flexor and a knee extensor. So because during squats, you're doing hip extension, it is inactive because it performs hip flexion. So when you look at uh, hypertrophy in response to studies where they use squats, you typically see the rectus femoris. This is a sideways body. Here's the glutes, here's the, the quad, here's the hamstrings. You see the hamstrings and the rectus femoris don't grow very much. All the other heads uh, of, of, the, uh, of the quads, the vast thigh muscle group, and the glutes, they grow quite well. That's what squats are great for. Um, but if you want to get the rectus femoris to grow, you need to do isolated knee extension. And if you want to get the hamstrings group to grow, especially that lower portion, if you want to grow the, the, uh, the short head of the biceps femoris, which is only a knee flexor, you've got it in knee flexion. So that's one of the reasons why when you see me write a program for a bodybuilder, it almost always includes some exercises that isolate the, the uh, knee extension and knee flexion actions because they're just not hit by squats and deadlifts. And the overlap that you need to worry about for squats and deadlifts is typically the lumbar and sometimes the glutes, although the glutes are a pretty robust muscle. Um, and it depends on what position you get into. Uh, some sumo pullers do notice they get some pretty significant stimulus from uh, the, the quads if they're getting deep, but typically they're being trained at a shorter muscle length compared to squats, where if you get down deep, you're getting a pretty good stretch on the quads. Um, so I think the overlap there is more to be considered for the lumbar and the glutes from a hypertrophy perspective. Uh, and just that they, they're both very hard and tiring and they load your spine, so they probably uh, need to be separated in the weak to some degree.